Hello and welcome to Sports News Africa, the home of Africa's sporting conversation. Let's take a look at what's coming up. Algeria's Yassine Brahimi has been named the BBC African Player of the Year. We'll have action from the Confederation of African Rugby Sevens from Zimbabwe. And Ethiopia's Wasson Zeleke wins the Gabon Marathon in Libreville. Thank you for watching Sports News Africa. I'm Ehi Longi. FC Porto's attacking midfielder Yassine Brahimi has been voted the BBC's 2014 African Footballer of the Year. Brahimi becomes the first Algerian to win the award, which is chosen by members of the public, after a fine year for club and country. Brahimi impressed for Algeria at the World Cup, scoring his first international goal in the group stage against South Korea, as the team reached the last 16 for the first time. Joining us via the phone now to talk about the award is the BBC's African sports reporter, Nick Cavell. Nick, hello. Nick, how does a short list of nominees come together? Well, what we do is we contact uh, journalists and sports experts from around the continent, from as many different African uh, countries as we possibly can, and uh, we ask them to, to send in their short list of three names uh, that uh, come to their mind uh, for the calendar year of 2014 for the players that uh, have impressed them. And from that list, we then come up with a list of five uh, nominees, uh, which is then opened up to the public, uh, and the public vote uh, gets uh, is out there for two weeks and people can vote online on the BBC uh, website or, or via text messages. So uh, that's what happened this year. We got a, a record number of votes and, uh, t and votes from as many as 207 uh, of the countries that are recognised uh, by, by FIFA um, around the world. So yeah, it was a, a, a massive response this year. Okay, record number of votes, but do you think that the fans saw the statistics and the facts or was the voting kind of regional? Um, I think I, I think it depends on the individual who, who goes onto the site to have a look at the the voting. Um, you know, I'm sure, obviously, some people will uh, vote for somebody from their own country. Uh, maybe not taking into account exactly uh, what was done out there, but I'd like to think that most of the people who voted uh, considered our shortlist, had a look at the the videos of the of the players that we we compiled and uh, read the backgrounds of why each of those. Um, people made it onto the shortlist, you know, the, the, the things they've achieved in 2014 and made an informed choice of, of who it is. It's uh, always difficult to tell how and why people have voted. Um, and uh, you can, it's always difficult with an award, I guess, to, to come up with the, the perfect way of, uh, of finding a winner. Um, but uh, this one is, is for the fans and the fans that decide which player they feel uh, was most deserving uh, for the year 2014. OK, now it was good for goalkeeper Vincent Inyama finishing second there. I mean, was the vote close? Um, the, the exact figures I, I'm not sure about, to be honest. Um, and, uh, you know, Vincent Inyama was a deserved uh, person on the five-man shortlist. And uh, we, we normally uh, stick to just naming the outright winner, which was Yassine Brahimi, and, and the rest the rest of the, the, the order. Uh, it's not something that we, we normally break it down into first, second, third, or fifth. It's just, um, you know, those are the, the, the names that get on the list and we, we announce the winner. It's uh, uh, the, the, the BBC policy not to try and break it down too much uh, beyond uh, the winner and the, and the others. OK, Nick Cavell of the BBC, thank you for speaking to Sports News Africa. And the Confederation of African Football has announced the names of the five finalists for its Player of the Year awards. And surprisingly, Brahimi does not feature on this list. CAF will also have a separate award for players based inside Africa. So let's take a look at the nominees. Manchester City midfielder and Ivory Coast international Yaya Toure is in the running for his fourth straight title. He will come up against Ghanaian skipper Asamoah Gyan. Nigerian goalkeeper Vincent and Yema, who have both been instrumental for both club and country, and on the award list for the players based in Africa. The most significant name is that of the recently departed South Africa and Orlando Pirates goalkeeper Senzo Robert Mewa. To Harare next, and the Zimbabwean capital hosted the Confederation of Rugby, African Rugby, sorry, Sevens Cup tournament, which saw Kenya Shuja surrender their title to South Africa Academy. The South African side dominated the encounter from start to finish and proved far too superior for Shuja, winning by 38 points to five. Zimbabwe rugby fans were treated to thrilling matches played in the capital Harare at the weekend. 
where teams battled it out for this year's Confederation of African Rugby Sevens Cup title. In the end, it was South Africa Academy who dominated the event and were crowned champs after romping home against Kenya Shuja 38-5 in the finals. We feel good, you know. It's 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 a, it's, it's a goal achieved, you know. We come here to win the to win the competition, you know. And uh, yeah, we um, it's a nice warm-up tournament to, to go into Dubai next week. We're going to play into invitational international tournament there, and uh, it's a great way to you know start the week. And uh, you know, hopefully we can finish up on a high that side too. Shuja had early in the day crushed Ivory Coast 51-0 to top Group B after recovering from a 12-14 defeat at the hands of Ugandans on the opening day on Saturday. Kenya won four out of their five pool matches to advance to the semi-finals as hosts Zimbabwe finished second in the pool. South Africa won Pool A with Tunisia finishing second. Namibia led 12-7 at the break before beating Uganda 17-7 to win the plate. Zimbabwe managed to finish third at the tournament after beating Tunisia 41-5 in the playoffs to qualify for next March's Hong Kong leg of the World Sevens Rugby Series. You know, we were expecting to uh, win this, uh, win our home tournament. Um, that was one of our goals. But one of the, the other main goal was to actually qualify for Hong Kong, which um, we, you know, which we managed to do. Mm -hmm. Dubai 7th is due from December 6th to 7th in the United Arab Emirates, while the Nelson Mandela Bay 7th in Port Elizabeth will go down from December 13th to 14th in South Africa. Welcome back to Sports News Africa. Fans lined up the streets of the capital, Libreville, as athletes from across the world took part in the Gabon Marathon. The race was won by Ethiopia's Wasson Zeleke. Cameroon's Justin Fuami won the half-marathon race. Thousands of athletes from across the continent and beyond took part in this year's Gabon Marathon, which took place in the capital city, Libreville, on Sunday. The event attracted over 500 elite runners from the continent and over 100 from overseas. In the grueling 42-kilometer men's race, Ethiopia's Wassen Zekele put a spirited performance despite the 30 degrees Celsius smoldering heat, clocking in at 2 hours, 23 minutes, 4 seconds to beat the rest. Two Kenyans, Maswai Kiptanui and Dixon Kimeli, finished second and third respectively. The race was well organized and uh, I'm happy to, be, to compete here in Gabon once again and hope to compete next year. In the 10-kilometer half marathon category, Justilin Foimi from Cameroon was first to cross the finish line in 1 hour 11 minutes and 46 seconds and was crowned champion. I have won a lot of races in Malabo, in Congo and also in Chad, but it was my first time to participate in the Gabon race and my first win. Foimi, who has made a name for himself in Cameroon, however called on his government to increase investment in the sport. The day before yesterday, I didn't know I would come here. I didn't receive any help. I came here at my own expense. But you could see that if someone would assist me, I would not just come for fun. I think that Cameroon must invest in this sport, as other countries do do purchase equipment, give us what we need, and I'm sure we can make it. Organizers of the race said the event, now in its second edition, was growing in popularity every year and hoped it would attract more participants next year. <laughs> Coming out of the shadows of, of sectarian violence that rocked the Central African Republic's capital, Bangui, towards the end of 2013, normality is now beginning to return to the country. Bangui hosted the final basketball game between Hit Trezor and Tongolo. Attended by the Republic's president, Catherine Samba Panza, Hit Trezor won the game 60 to 58. The guns and mortars have gone silent for now, and the cheering for the country's top basketball teams taken over in Bangui, the capital of the Central African Republic. 
In the final match of the championship watched by the country's president, Catherine Samba Panza, and top government officials, the national defending champions hit treasure clashed with arc rivals Tongolo. To the thrill of fans, treasures calculating shooters in impressive form despite having been forced into hiding during the violence were outstanding and quickly gained the lead against their opponents. Despite a power outage, the second half saw some fierce competition, but Treasure turned up the heat and at the last whistle, they had snatched a narrow win of 60-58. Tonight, I feel that this is really encouraging for the Central African people. I know that even if they're at home, in hospital or up country, they watched us tonight. It is an honor and a great joy for the Central African people. Organizers of the tournament said the success of the competition is a sign that everyone yearns for the return to normalcy in the country. The aim is to gather people, especially the youth. This includes the improvement of public health and the promotion of culture and the protection of the environment. So today, our goal is to bring people together and to tell the youth, let's unite for peace. Only a few months ago, such a competition would have been unthinkable. Reprisal attacks between Christian anti-Balaka militia and Muslims militia forced many to flee the country. FIFA has announced a three-man shortlist for this year's Ballon d'Or. They are Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi and Manuel Neuer. Real Madrid's Cristiano Ronaldo is the current holder of the title and will be hoping to win it for the third time. Barcelona's Lionel Messi won the accolade four times in a row between 2009 and 2012. And Manuel Neuer becomes the first goalkeeper to make the final three after winning the last World Cup with Germany and helping Bayern Munich win the 2013-14 Bundesliga title. And staying with nominations, Stephanie Roach has made it to the final three goal shortlist for the Pushkas Award for FIFA's Goal of the Year. The award will also be contested by Colombia's James Rodriguez and Netherlands' Robin van Persie. The winner will be announced on January the 12th next year. And we can now speak to Stephanie herself. She joins us on the line from France, where she currently plays for ASPTT, Albi. Hi, Stephanie. Fantastic news on reaching the final three for the Best Goal Award this year. Can I ask what your thoughts were when you first heard the news? Um, yeah, obviously, I watched it live on, on YouTube. It was, uh, it was linked live through the FIFA TV. I was just uh, so happy to see my name pop up first, which is obviously, obviously brilliant to see. I think uh, everyone was just happy. I think my whole family and friends are just are just delighted for me, and it's just it's a great experience for me to be able to, to say that and gonna go to um, the actual awards. It's brilliant. I'm just looking forward to it. Now. Okay, Stephanie, your goal was rated better than those of Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Tim Cahill's wonderful volley in the World Cup. Now, what do you think this says about the quality of your goal? Um, obviously, it's brilliant. I think uh, the, all the top 10 goals that were there were fantastic goals. And uh, I'm just really um, happy that my goal has been kind of being, um, being shown and kind of getting votes on merit more than just because I'm female. I like to think uh, that it's a goal that's, it's, that's worthy of the votes it's been getting. I think um, I've had so much support and I'm just happy, happy that that's happening. I think it's a, it's a big step for women's football. And I just hope that it, it can put it in the spotlight a little bit more and maybe get um, some more coverage on, on games and, and the capture goals that, that have been scored and that have been missed. It's, it's something that maybe in the future can be changed. Now, Stephanie, you correctly say all the goals in the top 10 are fantastic, but talk us through your goal. Um, yeah, basically um, the ball came down the right-hand side of the pitch. It was a throw-in. Uh, my teammate Anya O'Gorman crossed it into me. Um, it was a great pass in, and I just kind of had to take a first switch with my right foot. It all happened so fast, so uh, I think it was just basically pure instinct that I was able to flip the ball over the defender's head and, and spin and able to volley it. It was just, it's just one of these things that uh, I'm happy it came off, and I'm happy it was filmed as well and, and caught on camera. Oh, we're, all, we're all happy it was filmed, Stephanie. But finally, what reaction have you received since images of the goal went global? Um, the reaction's just been unbelievable. I think uh, I haven't been off my phone since last night. It's been a, a little bit tiring and stuff like that, but I'm not going to complain. It's something that, that I'm absolutely delighted with, and I'm, I'm just hopeful that maybe I can get more votes because obviously the voting starts again now, and I just kind of need, need people to get behind me again and, uh, and push for, for maybe 
maybe a, a tough finish it'll be like be an amazing experience for me to actually win the award and I'm just really thankful to everybody who's been voting I think um, my Twitter has been fantastic and um, same with Facebook and to everybody in the media who's been helping me try try highlight the goal it's been it's been great and I'm, I'm just as I said thankful to everybody who has been helpful with me okay Stephanie and thank you for speaking to us well, that's the end of Sports News Africa for today. Please join us tomorrow for all the latest from Africa and around the world. Goodbye for now.